Unveiling the Epic, a summary of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Reardon, Introduction to Percy Jackson. The Lightning Thief begins by introducing us to Percy Jackson, a 12-year-old boy living in New York City. From an early age, Percy has faced numerous challenges and struggles. He has always felt like he doesn't quite fit in, both at home and at school. His dyslexia makes reading difficult, and his ADHD causes restlessness and impulsiveness, leading to frequent clashes with authority figures. Percy's home life is far from ideal. His father, whom he has never met, disappeared before Percy was born, leaving his mother, Sally, to raise him alone. They live in a small apartment with Percy's abusive stepfather, Gabe Ugliano, who constantly mistreats both Percy and Sally. At school, Percy faces a similar pattern of trouble and alienation. He has been kicked out of numerous schools over the years due to his erratic behavior and learning difficulties. He struggles to focus in class, and his teachers often dismiss him as lazy or unintelligent. His only solace is his best friend, Grover Underwood, who has been by his side since they were young. Everything changes for Percy on a school field trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. During a class visit to the Greek and Roman exhibit, Percy experiences a strange encounter with his pre-algebra teacher, Mrs. Dodds Mrs. Dodds transforms into a fury, a mythological creature, and attacks Percy. To his astonishment, none of the other students or teachers seem to notice the attack. Percy is rescued by his Latin teacher, Mr. Brunner, who reveals himself as a centaur named Chiron. Chiron takes Percy to a secret training ground and sanctuary for demigods called Camp Half-Blood. It is here that Percy discovers his true heritage. Chiron explains that Percy is a demigod, a half-human, half-god offspring of a mortal and an Olympian deity. In Percy's case, his father is Poseidon, the powerful Greek god of the sea. At Camp Half-Blood, Percy finally finds a sense of belonging. He meets other demigods, each with their own divine parentage and unique abilities. Percy learns that the world he thought he knew is just a fraction of the truth. The gods of Olympus, the ancient beings of Greek mythology, still exist and play an active role in the modern world. They have children with mortals, creating demigods who inherit both their parents' strengths and weaknesses. Percy quickly adapts to life at camp, where he undergoes physical and combat training to develop his demigod abilities. He discovers that his dyslexia is a result of his brain being hardwired to read ancient Greek, the language of the gods. Similarly, his ADHD is a natural instinct honed for battle, allowing him to react quickly and decisively in dangerous situations. Percy also learns about the Olympian gods and their domains. Zeus rules over the sky and thunder, Poseidon controls the sea, and Hades reigns over the underworld. Each god has a cabin at Camp Half-Blood for their demigod children, creating a sense of community and identity for the campers. As Percy settles into his new life, he befriends Annabeth Chase, a fellow camper and daughter of Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Annabeth is fiercely intelligent and skilled in battle, serving as a valuable ally to Percy. Together with Grover, who is revealed to be a satyr, a creature tasked with protecting and guiding demigods, they form a formidable trio. Percy's arrival at Camp Half-Blood coincides with a rising tension among the gods. Zeus's master lightning bolt, the symbol of his power, has been stolen, and Zeus suspects Poseidon's involvement. Percy finds himself unwittingly caught in the middle of the conflict as accusations fly, and the gods threaten to erupt into a devastating war. As Percy grapples with his newfound identity and the weight of his divine heritage, he must face the challenges that lie ahead. The stolen lightning bolt, his own uncertain place in the world, and the ominous prophecies that swirl around him set the stage for an epic adventure that will test Percy's courage, resilience, and determination. Thus begins the extraordinary journey of Percy Jackson, a demigod who will be thrust into a world of ancient mythology, dangerous quests, and a destiny that may hold the fate of the gods themselves. The Stolen Lightning Bolt
At Camp Half-Blood, Percy Jackson finds himself embroiled in a crisis of epic proportions. Zeus, the king of the gods, accuses Percy of stealing his master lightning bolt, a weapon of immense power and a symbol of his authority. The theft has triggered a volatile situation among the gods, with Zeus demanding the return of the lightning bolt and threatening dire consequences if it is not found. Percy, stunned by the accusations against him, realizes the seriousness of the situation. If the gods go to war, it could unleash chaos and destruction upon the mortal world. Determined to prove his innocence and prevent a catastrophic conflict, Percy accepts the daunting task of finding the stolen lightning bolt. With Annabeth and Grover by his side, Percy embarks on a perilous quest that will take them across the United States. Their first stop is the entrance to the underworld, located in Los Angeles. Along the way, they encounter numerous challenges and face various mythological creatures that stand in their path. Their journey is fraught with danger and uncertainty. They encounter the fury of the wind god Aeolus, who threatens to unleash storms upon them. They face off against the wrath of Ares, the god of war, who accuses Percy of having the lightning bolt. The trio must use their wits, demigod abilities, and teamwork to overcome these obstacles and continue their quest. During their travels, Percy discovers more about his demigod abilities and the unique powers bestowed upon him as the son of Poseidon. He learns to harness the water and manipulate it to his advantage. These newfound abilities become vital in their encounters with various mythological creatures, including the fearsome Chimera, a monstrous beast with the heads of a lion, goat, and serpent. As they delve deeper into their quest, Percy and his companions receive guidance from the Oracle of Delphi, whose cryptic prophecies provide clues to the location of the stolen lightning bolt. They learn of a hidden entrance to the underworld in the heart of the West Coast, guarded by the god of wealth, Hades. Their journey takes them through treacherous landscapes and mythical locations tied to Greek mythology. They traverse the vast and dangerous Mississippi River, where they encounter the god of the river, the Naiads, and the dangers lurking beneath the water's surface. They also face the challenge of crossing the Sea of Monsters, a treacherous stretch of water filled with dangerous creatures and unpredictable storms. As Percy and his friends navigate these perils, tensions rise among them. Annabeth, daughter of Athena, and Percy clash over their differing approaches and perspectives. Annabeth values strategy and intelligence, while Percy relies more on his instincts and sheer willpower. However, they must learn to put their differences aside and work together if they are to succeed in their quest. Throughout their journey, Percy discovers more about the world of the gods and the complex relationships between them. He learns that the Olympian gods, despite their immortality and power, are not infallible. They possess human-like flaws and rivalries that often spill over into the mortal realm. The theft of Zeus's lightning bolt serves as a catalyst, exposing these tensions and threatening to destabilize the delicate balance among the gods. As Percy and his friends draw closer to their goal, they face a final confrontation with Luke, a fellow demigod and son of Hermes, who has been acting suspiciously throughout their quest. Luke's true allegiance is revealed as he aligns himself with Kronos, the ancient Titan lord and the greatest threat to the Olympian gods. It becomes clear that Luke's actions are part of a larger plot to overthrow the gods and reshape the world in the Titan's image. With the fate of the gods and the world hanging in the balance, Percy realizes the magnitude of his role in this epic struggle. He must confront not only the external challenges and mythological creatures but also his own doubts and fears. The quest to find the stolen lightning bolt becomes more than just a mission of personal exoneration, it becomes a battle for the very survival of Olympus and the forces of good. In the midst of these trials and revelations, Percy's character grows and evolves. He learns to trust his instincts and rely on the bonds of friendship. The quest not only tests his physical abilities but also strengthens his resolve and determination to do what is right, no matter the cost. Percy and his friends stand on the precipice of a monumental battle. 
The stolen lightning bolt remains out of reach, but they are now armed with knowledge, allies, and a growing understanding of the magnitude of the threat they face. The stage is set for the climactic final sections of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, where Percy's true strength and heroism will be tested like never before. Perils and Mythological Encounters as Percy Jackson and his companions continue their quest to find the stolen lightning bolt, they encounter a series of perils and mythological creatures that test their mettle and push them to their limits. Their journey takes them to the heart of America, where they face their first major challenge, the formidable Medusa. Located in the desolate landscape of the western United States, Medusa's lair is a labyrinthine maze of perilous traps and petrified victims. Armed with Medusa's severed head, which turns anyone who looks at it into stone, Percy and his friends must navigate the maze and defeat Medusa. Percy's demigod abilities, including his power over water, prove to be crucial in this encounter. With quick thinking and the aid of Annabeth's strategic insight, they manage to outsmart Medusa and emerge victorious. As a result of their triumph, they acquire a valuable artifact, the head of Medusa, which will play a pivotal role in their future challenges. Their next obstacle lies in the form of the Lotus Hotel and Casino, an enchanting establishment that lures unsuspecting guests into a never-ending cycle of pleasure and oblivion. Time becomes distorted within its walls, and visitors can lose themselves in its captivating illusions. Percy, Annabeth, and Grover find themselves trapped in the Lotus Hotel, losing track of days, months, and even years. Through their combined strength and resilience, they break free from the enchantment of the lotus flowers and escape the clutches of the hotel. Their experience serves as a cautionary tale, reminding them of the need to remain vigilant and focused on their quest, despite the temptations that surround them. Continuing their journey, Percy and his friends encounter various other mythological creatures and challenges. They face the Nemean lion, a gigantic and ferocious beast with impenetrable golden fur. Through their resourcefulness and teamwork, they manage to defeat the lion and acquire its valuable hide, which grants them heightened protection. Their path also leads them to the island of Circe, a sorceress known for her ability to transform men into animals. To avoid falling victim to Circe's magic, Percy and his friends devise a plan. Using Medusa's head, they turn the sorceress into a guinea pig and force her to undo the transformations she has inflicted on others. This encounter not only showcases their cunning but also emphasizes the importance of using their enemies' weaknesses against them. As their journey progresses, Percy gains a deeper understanding of his role as a demigod and the responsibilities that come with it. He realizes that his actions can have far-reaching consequences, not only for himself but for the entire world. The weight of his destiny becomes increasingly apparent, and he must grapple with the choices he makes and the sacrifices he is willing to endure. Along the way, Percy's bond with Annabeth and Grover strengthens. They rely on each other for support, guidance, and protection. The trio becomes a formidable team, utilizing their individual strengths and abilities to overcome the challenges they face. Their unwavering loyalty to one another becomes a beacon of hope amidst the darkness that surrounds them. Through their encounters with mythical creatures and the trials they face, Percy and his friends gain valuable insights into the world of Greek mythology. They witness firsthand the vastness and complexity of this ancient realm, its interconnectedness with the mortal world, and the enduring power of the gods and their offspring. Percy and his companions find themselves on the brink of a revelation, one that will unveil the true extent of the danger they face and the ancient enemy they must confront. Armed with newfound knowledge, artifacts, and strengthened bonds, they prepare themselves for the final stages of their quest, where the fate of Olympus and the world will be decided. Betrayal and the Battle for Olympus In this pivotal section of the story, Percy Jackson and his allies face betrayal, daunting challenges, and the ultimate battle for Olympus. As the quest to find the stolen lightning bolt reaches its climax, the true scope of the plot against the gods becomes clearer, putting Percy's strength and resolve to the test. 
Percy's journey brings him face to face with Luke, his former friend and fellow demigod, who reveals his allegiance to Kronos, the ancient titan lord and the arch-nemesis of the Olympian gods. Luke has been orchestrating the theft of the lightning bolt and other acts of sabotage, intending to plunge the gods into chaos and pave the way for Kronos's return. The revelation of Luke's betrayal shakes Percy to his core. He feels a deep sense of personal loss and betrayal, grappling with conflicting emotions of anger, sadness, and confusion. Despite their past friendship, Percy recognizes the severity of the situation and the need to confront Luke and stop his destructive plans. As the forces of Kronos gather strength, Percy and his allies must prepare for the impending battle. They return to Camp Half-Blood, where they find the demigods preparing for war. The camp becomes a hive of activity as weapons are forged, strategies are devised, and alliances are formed. It is a time of intense training and preparation, with every demigod understanding the stakes and the potential consequences of failure. Percy finds himself at the center of attention as the prophecy surrounding him unfolds. The oracle's words reveal that Percy is the one with the power to decide the fate of Olympus, to either save or destroy the gods. The weight of this responsibility weighs heavily on him, but he also realizes that he cannot face this challenge alone. Guided by his friends and the knowledge imparted by Chiron and other mentors, Percy hones his skills and harnesses his unique powers. He undergoes rigorous training and learns to channel his emotions and experiences into his fighting prowess. He discovers the strength within himself and begins to believe in his ability to make a difference. The battle for Olympus draws near, and Percy and his friends embark on a dangerous mission to infiltrate the throne room of Mount Olympus itself. With the aid of the winged shoes given to him by his father Poseidon, Percy soars through the skies, navigating through dangerous obstacles and eluding enemy forces. Within Olympus, Percy confronts Luke, who has aligned himself with Kronos, embodying the embodiment of betrayal and treachery. The confrontation is both physical and emotional, with Percy trying to reach out to the remnants of Luke's former self, hoping to appeal to his sense of loyalty and friendship. However, Luke is consumed by darkness and refuses to relent, leading to a climactic battle between the two former friends. The battle rages throughout the throne room, with the gods and demigods joining forces to repel the invading forces of Kronos. The air crackles with lightning as Zeus unleashes his power, Poseidon commands the sea, and other gods demonstrate their might against the onslaught of titans and monsters. Percy fights with unwavering determination, fueled by a mixture of love, loyalty, and the conviction that he must protect his friends and the world he holds dear. His demigod abilities come to the fore as he wields his celestial bronze sword, Riptide, against the forces of evil. His control over water becomes a powerful weapon, allowing him to unleash devastating attacks and turn the tide of battle. The battle reaches its climax as Percy faces Kronos himself, the embodiment of ancient evil. Kronos seeks to destroy the gods and reshape the world in his own image, eradicating the age of the Olympians. Percy must summon every ounce of strength, skill, and courage to defeat this formidable opponent and prevent the downfall of Olympus. In the midst of the chaos and destruction, Percy receives aid from unexpected sources. The gods, recognizing his bravery and determination, lend their powers to him, empowering him to deliver a decisive blow against Kronos. With a final strike, Percy incapacitates the Titan Lord, effectively neutralizing the threat and saving Olympus. As the battle subsides and the dust settles, the demigods and gods assess the aftermath. The cost of victory is evident, with casualties and injuries among their ranks. However, Olympus stands tall, having survived the onslaught and thwarted Kronos's plans. Percy's role in the victory is acknowledged, and he is praised for his bravery and leadership. He has come into his own as a hero, embracing his destiny and proving himself worthy of the title. But even as the celebration begins, Percy realizes that the world of the gods will never be the same. 
The events of the battle have irrevocably changed the landscape of Olympus and the relationships between the gods and demigods. Percy reflects on the sacrifices made and the lessons learned throughout his journey. He understands that the struggle between the forces of good and evil will continue, and that he and his fellow demigods must remain vigilant and prepared for future challenges. The quest may be over, but his life as a hero has only just begun. Reflection, growth, and a new beginning. With the battle for Olympus behind him, Percy Jackson enters a period of reflection and contemplation. The events he has witnessed and the challenges he has overcome have left a lasting impact on his life and the world around him. Delves into Percy's personal growth, the aftermath of the battle, and the new beginnings that lie ahead. As the hero of the prophecy, Percy grapples with the weight of his actions and the choices he has made. He reflects on the sacrifices of his friends, the lives lost, and the lasting impact of the battle against Kronos. It is a time of introspection, as he navigates the emotional aftermath of the conflict and contemplates his place in the world. Percy's experiences have shaped him into a wiser and more mature individual. He has learned the importance of trust, friendship, and the power of unity. The bonds forged during the quest have solidified, and Percy realizes the enduring strength that comes from standing together. He cherishes the memories of his adventures and the people who have played a significant role in his journey. In the aftermath of the battle, Percy witnesses the healing and rebuilding process taking place within Olympus and Camp Half-Blood. The gods work tirelessly to repair the damages and restore order to their realm. The demigods, too, are faced with the task of rebuilding their lives and coming to terms with the losses they have endured. During this period of reflection, Percy also contemplates his own identity as a demigod and the son of Poseidon. He grapples with the knowledge that his divine heritage sets him apart from the mortal world, but also acknowledges the responsibility that comes with his powers. He ponders the balance between his mortal and divine aspects and how he can use his unique abilities for the greater good. The aftermath of the battle also brings changes and adjustments to Percy's relationships. He reconnects with Annabeth, their bond strengthened by their shared experiences and the trials they have overcome together. Their friendship evolves into something deeper, as they navigate the complexities of their feelings amidst the backdrop of a world forever changed. As life settles into a new rhythm, Percy finds solace and guidance in the familiar surroundings of Camp Half-Blood. He resumes his training and studies, honing his skills and preparing for future challenges that may arise. He finds comfort in the camaraderie of his fellow demigods, who understand the unique challenges they face as children of the gods. Percy also learns to embrace his role as a leader and a protector. With his experiences and the respect earned from his peers, he becomes a figure of inspiration within the camp. He takes on the responsibility of mentoring younger demigods, passing on the knowledge and lessons he has acquired through his own journey. Beyond the boundaries of Camp Half-Blood, Percy's actions have had a ripple effect throughout the world of the gods. The victory over Kronos and the preservation of Olympus solidify his place among the pantheon of legendary heroes. He becomes a symbol of hope and resilience, a demigod who defied the odds and helped to preserve the balance between the mortal and divine realms. Percy stands at the precipice of a new beginning. The battles he has fought and the challenges he has overcome have shaped him into a formidable hero. He has learned that his journey as a demigod is not limited to a single quest, but an ongoing commitment to protect the world from the forces of darkness. With the knowledge that new adventures and trials await, Percy embraces the uncertainty of the future. He has come to understand that his destiny is intricately tied to the fate of the gods and the world itself. And so, with renewed determination, he sets forth, ready to face whatever lies ahead and continue his path as the legendary demigod, Percy Jackson.